In this video, we're going to learn all about the dependency service in Xamarin Forms. So the dependency service is a dependency injection container that is built in right into Xamarin Forms. Um, it, it is kind of limited because Mostly its use case is to just, um, you know, allow you to reach platform specific code. So iOS specific code, Android specific code on your shared code layer, which is pretty cool. We're going to see that in our video, uh, but for other dependency injection scenarios, it might be a little bit limited. So if you don't know about dependency injection, you might want to check out my other video dependency injection for absolute beginners. It should pop up on your screen right now. Um, if you don't know what dependency injection is, go check that out first. Um, but for anyone else, come right through. We're going to learn about dependency service in Xamarin Forms. So here we are in a file new Xamarin Forms project. Um, on the left, you can see it running in Visual Studio for Mac. You can see all the XAML that is needed for showing our page on the right that is running in a iOS simulator. Um, so let's update our little title here first and make it the dependency service sample. And if I save this, then with hot reload, you can automatically see the iOS simulator updating. So as long as you only make changes in XAML, you can see this um, updating almost instantly on the iOS simulator, Android emulator, or even on your physical devices. So that is very, very cool. I will implement a little bit of UI later on, but for now, let's just dive straight into the dependency service. That's what we are here for. Um, so let's go into our main page code behind. And um, I'm just going to go to a arbitrary place here just to show you the dependency um, service right here. Um, so the dependency service is kind of like your dependency injection container um, that is built into Xamarin Forms. And it is specifically, I think, for you know reaching that platform specific code in your shared code. What that exactly means, we will see in a minute. Um, if you don't know what a dependency injection container is, please go back to my dependency injection for absolute beginners video. It should pop up on your screen right now. Um, so uh, go through that one first. Hopefully it will become more clear. Um, for the rest, I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about dependency injection already. And here we can see the dependency service. So the dependency service in this case is just a static class um, that is built into Xamarin Forms with a couple of methods. Um, here's the get. Uh, which allows us to get a platform specific implementation of the type that we specify. Uh, so what that exactly means, we will see in a little bit. We can register a implementation, so we can register a, a concrete class or um, you know something that is implemented by a interface. So we can specify this is the interface and this is the concrete implementation, and it will try to create that concrete implementation whenever we ask for a interface. Um, so you know then we have that separation of concerns and um, 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 we can better reuse our um, classes whenever we just let it implement this interface. Uh, we can register a singleton, so there we can influence the um, lifetime of our objects. Um, so it's good to know by default, whenever you do a get, it will be returned as a singleton. So the first time you do a get on a certain class and it's not available yet, it will make a new implementation. And by it, I mean the dependency service. It will make a new instance of that concrete implementation, return that to you. And each time when you subsequently call that get, you will get that same instance back to you. So there will always be at most one instance of that object in the lifetime of your app. Um, so you can influence that. Um, we can also get like, if you go back to the get, we have an overload where you can specify the dependency fetch target. Um, so this is the global instance, which is like the default behavior, uh, which will give you that global instance that that singleton basically, um, or you can go to the new instance where you will get a new instance each time. Um, but beware that you will have to take care of the lifetime of that object. So if you're going to create a 100 new instances, they are not going to be cleaned up for you. That is something that you will have to do yourself. Typically, this is not something that you need. So just use the default behavior unless you have a very good reason to not do that. Um, so that's the register singleton. It, it has a, a very specific uh, method to do that as well. And we have the resolve to be perfectly honest. I don't know exactly what the difference is between the get and the resolve. Um, so if you do know, please let me know in the comments. Or if you want me to find out, then also let me know in the comments and I will dive into it for you and let you know. Uh, but get and resolve 
solve mostly I think do the same thing um, but you know so there's two methods for it so there has to be some kind of um, difference right but there we go that is what the dependency service can do for you um, now let's whip up a little small example for you to get that point across um, so here in my shared code i'm going to go to our solution the shared project right here i'm going to add a new file which is going to be a interface the i device info service here we go so the naming is totally up to you some find this uh, more of like a service kind of pattern some just um, use the concrete um, implementation class to just you know i device info and then you have the device info um, it's totally up to you what you think is uh, better um, i'm going to go with the service paradigm here so empty interface i device info service here we go and we have a public interface so that's very cool and an interface as you know is just just a contract it just sums up the methods that are available inside of a class and it doesn't care about the implementation uh, which is going to be very useful for the Xamarin forms um, paradigm right because we just want to know which methods are here and um, from here we don't care how it's implemented and that comes in very handy because if we're running on iOS the implementation is very different from when we're running on Android right because the code is just completely different uh, the namespaces are different we'll see that in a little bit um, and this is also the reason why you typically have to install Xamarin forms plugins uh, NuGets onto all of your projects because basically the NuGet that you install on your shared project will just give you this um, kind of interface um, class and the um, NuGets that you install on your platform project will have the actual concrete implementation code um, that is used to actually execute the functionality that you're after. So that is why you have to install all of those um, plugins on all of your projects that you're using. So see, now you understand a little bit about the background here. Um, here in this interface, we're going to say, um, okay, string um, get device info. So this will, whoops, not info actually, uh, model. So we are going to return the model of the device that we are running on. Um, and as long as you, you know, um, return a type that is understood in your shared project, so it can be simple type strings, ints, whatever. But it can definitely also be more complex types as long as they live in like your shared project or something that is referenced by your shared project, um, then you can do that as well. And you return that from your platform project, um, you know, in that same kind of way that is understood by your shared project. Um, you can do anything you want. So that is really cool. Um, I realize this sounds a little bit abstract, so hopefully it will become clear. Uh, but this is definitely one of those things that you probably have to try out a couple of times yourself um, so you know how this all fits together. So please do that. That. Also, the official Microsoft Docs pages are linked in the video description, so go check them out as well. Now let's go into our platform specific project. So first to Android, I'm going to show you this on iOS, but to be complete, let's do it on Android as well. I'm going to add a new class and I'm going to say device info um, service. Again, um, you might want to add the platform name in here. That is something that people like to do. It's totally up to you. You don't have to do that. It's not bound to any naming scheme or whatever. Um, it's just whatever is clearest to you and fits your um, strategy and, and is the most clear to you and your team. Uh, so I'm just going to keep it as device info service. Here we go. Do new. And of course, this has to implement the I device info service. So here we go. Uh, we don't need this. Uh, constructor because that is generated for us and I'm going to hoover over this interface name and go to say implement interface um, and it's going to give us a method that is public string get device model just as we've defined but it's going to throw a not implemented exception right now um, so this is the thing that we need to implement now I know for Android this is going to be android.os.build.model uh, this is the way to return the device model on Android and you can see immediately this is very specific to Android because this is an Android namespace, Android um, object, and, and it will return the model. So this is really what it's all about with the dependency service, basically, because, you know, we are reaching into the platform specific code and we are basically making that available into our shared code. So we're just making a small step to our platform specific ones. Xamarin Forms already provides you with a lot of cross platform stuff. Um, they also do it like with this same mechanism. Um, but, you know, there are things that are not provided by Xamarin Forms and you can make it very easily accessible on that shared layer yourself by going through this with the dependency service. Uh, so 
this is how to do it on Android. Let's also create our implementation on iOS. And then I'll circle back to how to use that with the dependency service. So here we're going to do device info service again. Uh, the name can be the same because we're in a different project. Uh, again, don't need the constructor. And we're going to say I device info service, let it generate it for us again. Um, but on iOS this time, I know it's going to have to return the UI kit dot UI device dot shared. No, not the shared dot dot device current device. There we go. Dot model. So there we go. This is how a model is returned on iOS. And in this case, you know, it's it's simple string, so that should be easy. Uh, but if you want to return a more complex type instead of a string, you can totally do that. Just um, say return new complex type, fill it with all the properties that you need, and you can take that back to your shared project um, and it will understand that perfectly. So that is really cool. But it also works for simple strings as we are going to do now. Um, so if we go back, actually, let me go back to the main page here and um, show you the dependency service methods again. Um, so the thing that we still want to do with like our device info services is um, um, register them with the dependency service, right? So the way to do this normally would be like register and we can say we have an overload of this. So we could say um, I device info service. Um, and here we would say device info service. See here is where you get in trouble if you choose the same names. Um, and this would basically register like a concrete implementation uh, with this interface, right? So whenever we ask for this interface, it will know to return this actual concrete implementation. Uh, now, in this case, it doesn't know the implementation because uh, the reference is going from the um, shared project to well, from the platform project to our shared project and not the other way around because we would have circular uh, reference things so it doesn't know about the actual classes in our platform projects. And that is exactly the problem that Xamarin Forms team had to solve. But this is under the covers what is going to be called whenever I'm uh, going to call the code that I'm going to show you right now. So just remember this, nothing uh, magic is going to happen. Um, so this is just what is going to be called. So let's see, um, stop talking in abstract here and let's see what this is actually about. So if I go to a platform specific implementation here, uh, we are going to add a attribute here. And this is the way that you're going to find on the internet a lot when you're searching for this. Um, and we're going to say assembly Xamarin dot forms dot dependency. Here we go. So these attributes attributes are usually just shortcuts for executing some code. If you go look in the Xamarin forms um, source, then you can go to this dependency attribute and you can see that it probably calls that register that I've just shown you. Um, so here you can just say dependency and we will have to specify only the type of the thing that we want to register the concrete type. So we're going to say type of um, there we go. And we're going to say device info service. Uh, there we go. We have to add the right using here. So do that. And now with this, it's going to call the dependency service dot register uh, with this concrete class. And because this class implements the I device info service, um, it, it can uh, implement multiple um, interfaces and it will just register that for you as well. Uh, but now it knows whenever we ask for like the I device info service, it can um, give us back this concrete class and it has to execute this code whenever we call the get device model method. So does that still make sense? It will hopefully become clear in a um, little bit. Um, so we have this one, this does the register and we also have to do that for Android to make sure it works there as well. Um, also add the right using here, but now the one in Android. Um, so there we go. And to make this all visible, I'm going to go back to our main page right here, remove all the labels, we don't need that. And I'm going just going to keep um, one label right here, which is going to be the X name is device model label, there we go. Um, actually remove all this text here don't want to confuse the user. Uh, so there we go, device model label, go into our code behind, and we are going to say dot text is. So here's where we want to show our model, right? So now we need to get it from our dependency service. Um, so I'm going to say for device info service is, 
dependency service dot get you can also dot do dot resolve um, as I mentioned but we're going to do dot get and here we're going to say I device info service um, so here we go nothing fancy going on and with this we're getting our concrete implementation of the I device info service now the cool thing is of course we are only running one um, platform on you know a device per time so um, if we run on ios it will register the concrete implementation for ios for us and on android it will automatically register the concrete implementation on android for us so you know there's only one registry made at a time um, but of course you can also implement some code to you know um, do some registrations yourself um, and depending on some logic maybe you're doing some a b testing and you want to um, at the one time do the one implementation and then the other time do the other um, so we have to make sure that a implementation is um, ready for us, right? So we want to check if device info service not is null. Uh, of course, you can also skip this, but um, it, just to show you that it can be null. Um, and whenever you're going to call the next thing, then it will um, crash with a null reference exception. So you might want to implement some error handling, make it more robust. Um, or, you know, if you think like, hey, I want my application to crash whenever it's not shown, uh, whenever it's not registered. Um, so I know that there's some work to do, then of course, you can do that too. Um, and what we can do now on our device info service, we can call the device model. We know that method is available on our interface. We don't care how it's implemented, but we just know it's there and we can call it and we will get a string back that we can now show into our label. Okay, so I've changed mostly code. So we're going to have to stop running our project here and I'm going to restart it again. Um, actually, let's put in a breakpoint here and we can see what is going on. Um, so what is going to happen is uh, whenever we run this code, we're running on iOS, so it will go to our iOS project. Uh, with this attribute, it will register this device info service as um, you know the implementation for our iDevice info service. Um, and then whenever it comes back to our main page right here, with the dependency service, we are going to get a concrete implementation of the iDevice info service. Uh, we'll see through our breakpoint point that that is going to be the iOS one. And whenever we have that actual implementation, we can call upon that with the get device model, we're going to reach into that platform specific code, and we are going to see the model of this device. So step over this. And you can see here that this device info service is of the type XF device service sample iOS device info service. So this is our iOS implementation. Um, it's not null. So if I just continue running here, you can see it gives us the model which is an iPhone in this case, and that seems accurate. Um, so we've successfully registered something in our dependency service. Um, we've gotten that out of the dependency service, and we have called a method that will give us the expected results, which is very, very cool. Now, of course, all the methods that I've just shown you um, also allow you to do manual registrations in the dependency service. So you can do some dependency injection with this as well. Um, I don't think unless you you know do it manually, dependency injection um, like in the constructor and that kind of thing is not supported um, so you know it isn't smart enough to register a whole bunch of dependencies and then say I want to resolve um, a class that actually need a dependency in the constructor um, it doesn't um, see that and it doesn't allow you to do that so the dependency service is kind of limited in what it can do um, but in other videos if that's what you want to see um, let me know which framework you want to see with Xamarin forms let me know in the comments and I'll I'll see if I can make a video for that as well. Um, other frameworks are more mature and can do other fancy stuff that will even make it um, easier to write code and, and not have to register and figure out all the things yourself. But at least now you know how to use the dependency service. There you have it. That's how to use the dependency service in Xamarin Forms. Was it useful to you? Did you already know it? Was it a little bit clear? Because, you know, these things are just a little bit hard to explain, I feel. Uh, but, you know, with a piece of code, hopefully some explanation, some jumping around, um, showing you a bunch of things, hopefully that got the point across. If not, please let me know in the comments. I'll be glad to help you with any questions you might still have. Um, of course, I've mentioned this a couple of times. If you want to see other dependency injection frameworks or maybe other code scenarios, things, anything, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to create videos for you. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up um, somewhere around here. Um, if you've liked more on this channel or you're curious to see what's coming next, 
subscribe to my channel and um, ding that bell to be notified automatically whenever new stuff comes available. Thank you for your support. I'll be looking forward to making four videos for you and I'll see you for the next one.